Yeah. Okay. Um, it looks pretty good, yeah, and I'm just going to say go. Okay. Yeah, so I actually started out as a psych major. I came to Stanford really interested in uh, learning about the human brain and how it works and uh, psychology, and I you know, knew that Stanford was great in psych, and so that's what I did my freshman year is I took a lot of uh, psychology classes. Autumn and I actually met in an intro sem with mm -hmm. a psychology professor, Lara Boroditsky, and why'd you take that one? I thought it sounded interesting. Mm -hmm. I thought it sounded fun. Wanted to try it out. Yeah, it was about um, language and thought and the way language shapes the way we think. And uh, so that's what I was really into freshman year. And I was sort of even, I think I was a declared psych major at that point. But then that summer, I was actually working in Anne Fernald's lab. And she does the Center for Infant Studies. And so working in her lab, she sort of talked to me a little bit about my interests. And I said that I was you know, potentially interested in going to medical school. And I sort of had these interests in psychology, but I was kind of open-minded. And she really, you know, definitely strongly encouraged me to be a hum bio major instead. And it was kind of funny coming from a psych professor. But um, it was good advice, because sophomore year, I, I jumped into the core. And it was a, a whirlwind experience of being exposed to all sorts of different um, topics from around the university, different professors, and different sort of traditions and ways of looking at humanity and what it means to be human from a biological, but also a evolutionary and cultural sort of level. And that was, it was just very, very valuable for me. And it's sort of developed since then into many different things. But uh, I don't know, how'd you get into <laughs> bio? Um, so I started my undergrad as more of a chemistry major. I was really excited about chemistry. Went, took the classes, enjoyed them, but didn't seem like it was the right departmental fit for me. Um, I didn't feel like I had a lot of good contact with the faculty and it just felt a little far removed. And I sort of stumbled across Humbio by accident. I was interested in everything from chem to, to Japanese to English classes to psych and so I stumbled across on bio, decided to try taking it, and the first week I was just sucked in. I loved it. I loved how interdisciplinary it was. It was great for me since I wasn't really committed to a certain route. And most importantly, I think the, the faculty, the department, just gave me a really good, like, warm, fuzzy vibe. I just felt really welcome. Like, there were a lot of direct resources, a lot of intentional resources directed at undergrad students. And I think that's something that's really unique about Humbio. It's an undergrad thing. There's no graduate aspect to it, so all of the the efforts and the resources are dedicated to those undergraduate students, which is pretty rare. Yeah. Yeah. And I think if anything, I've experienced that more this year as a course associate. My full-time job is to just dedicate all my time to teaching students who are in the human biology core, that first set of classes that all hum bio majors have to take. And it's just amazing because in all other departments, the TAs are usually grad students or postdocs or people who are, who are working sort of part-time and then they teach part-time. Like one quarter. Yeah, very temporary, and, and Humbio is really unique in that it hires people full-time jobs, full year, and, and asks them to only commit to doing this one task, which I think is really special because you're able to develop really close relationships with your TAs during that year. And I know from the other side now, as one of those TAs, it's, it's pretty special, and um, I think that's very something also that kind of sets Humbio apart that I didn't realize until now was such a big part of, of my experience in the major. So this year I'm a, a TA for Human Behavioral Biology, which is Robert Sapolsky's uh, very well-known class. And that's one of those ones that really just every time you come home from a lecture, you know, three days a week, you're just thinking so much about what you learned in lecture that day. You know, you're, you're learning about what sorts of influences different, you know, genetic variants of like a vasopressin receptor have on your likelihood of infidelity. Or, you know, you're looking at how, you know, for example, the, I guess like the number of stressful events in your childhood relate to your likelihood of developing depression or something like that. And classes like that, I think, are just so interesting, not only because they teach you sort of how these things develop and what, uh, where they come from, but also that they're sort of very far reaching in their implications. And I think taking those implications and not just mentioning them, but giving them entire courses and entire professors dedicated to thinking about the far-reaching implications for matters of, you know, public health or things like that. 
is really what Humbayo is so good at, you know. In the Humbayo major, there's an area of concentration, and so you, you get to kind of choose your own. There's not a set of requirements, like everyone has to take a few things, like statistics and the core, which prepares you for upper division classes, but no one has to do the same upper division classes, and you sort of get to design your own thing. And so for me, I was focused on infectious health, or infectious disease and public health. And um, from that, I was able to take a lot of courses that sort of complemented one another. Um, Humbayo also encourages you to take classes out of the department, and so you're required to take classes that are cross-listed in other departments to facilitate that interdisciplinary approach. Um, so some examples for me, I took some hardcore molecular kind of biology-based classes about virology. Um, I took a class here, Humans and Viruses, with Bob Siegel, and it actually was pretty cool. It was pretty interdisciplinary, but it did focus a lot on the hard technical de details, the molecular biology of viruses, and then I took health policy classes to complement that, so sort of thinking about how you would use that biological molecular knowledge in, in a policy perspective, um, and I took public health classes that were focused on like behavioral psychology, so thinking about interventions and how you would um, implement those based on, based on research, and so I was able to sort of get a bunch of different aspects of public health to focus on one idea, which was pretty cool. Yeah. I don't know if I explained it Yeah. <laughs> and just thinking about my own area of concentration, I was more or less concerned with sort of aging in our society and how it's done and how it can be done well. You know, what it what is it about people who are, you know, have lived a long and good life, a life that they're sort of deeply happy with. And so I was really interested in the intersection of sort of ethics and philosophy and sort of what it means to live a good life, you know, according to everything from like Plato up to a course called value science here at Stanford that you know is about um, examining your values the things you want out of life in a scientific context all the way over to sort of the Vaden Health Center and looking at a pursuit of health and happiness course which ultimately led to a couple conferences on the topic and a, a sort of deep interest in positive psychology and happiness and and what it is that allows people to be satisfied in life and Personally, I think that's the most important thing to take out of your undergraduate education. I feel like it, it answers more holistic and complete questions when you're doing that type of research, whereas when you're doing super, super quantitative data, you sort of have to, you have to reduce it down to a very specific question, very specific, operationalized variables. Um, and so I think it's sort of kind of like a spectrum, and I think each of them have their benefits and their disadvantages, but... Yeah, um, and even at the level of uh, quantitative research. You know, I, I worked in James Gross's lab and, you know, we study emotion regulation and that can be a really sort of tricky concept to try to operationalize and reduce down to something that you can reliably measure in a laboratory context. Um, and I think it's no coincidence that uh, James Gross, he was a, a philosophy undergraduate major and, you know, that led him eventually to pursue a clinical degree in psych, but that philosophical background was something that really shines through. You can tell when you're, you're thinking through a problem of what it really means to experience an emotion in the, in, in the way that you would actually report it if you're sitting in, if an, in an fMRI scanner and we're like measuring your amygdala activity at the same time and trying to get at something as subtle as, you know, the, the nuances of your mood and whether some picture we showed you made you feel happy or disgusted or f infuriated or sad or, you know, any, anything among that entire sort of emotional spectrum and so just today like I was teaching a section for human behavioral biology and we were talking about what was it variations in uh, BDNF brain derived neurotrophic factor and the way that these different gene variants can lead to uh, people more susceptible to fear and anxiety and the way that it influences their amygdala activation or not and I just sort of saw that connection with a lot of the research that I'd done in James Gross in his lab because it's a, uh, a psychophysiology laboratory and we looked a lot at amygdala activation and the way that influences the, the fear response and how you use that to measure emotion from a you know, level of blood flow to the level of self-report um, all the way to the level of self-report of how often do people use these sort of emotion regulation strategies in everyday life. Um, and so I just think all of those taken together are really interesting and it's the the sort of thing that I you can do here very well. Uh, I think the the material we teach is really varied so it's everything from like molecular and cell biology and to very um, 
very, very relevant policies. We're going to be talking a lot about healthcare policy coming up right now. We're on environmental policy. But I think what we try to do is we try to make it relevant. So even if we're talking about a cell or a type of DNA, we always try to make what we're teaching somewhat relevant to the students. Like, yes, to some extent, you do have to memorize how DNA replication works. You do have to memorize what a quality adjusted life year is. But you know, what is the, the underlying importance? Why are we learning these concepts? How can you apply them? I think the, the sort of goal, if I had to say that Gumbayo had a goal, was to just foster in students really critical and interdisciplinary thoughts such that they can tackle global problems. And, and that's sort of what it's doing. It's your, your understanding of biology, so you're an informed, um, you're very informed about the science behind things and, and the social science as well, but you're also understanding the the, cult the, the cultural aspects to it and sort of how policies exist, how to work within, <laughs> within policies with policies and trying to get things implemented. So it's really integrating that knowledge of various scientific aspects of research of, um, of biology with implementing change. Well, I think for me, I'm, my experience is probably a lot different from most home bio majors because I am essentially doing that whole core set of classes again and I'm teaching it so I am like every day fully fully involved in it and engrossed in it. Um, and so for me it's a little hard. I don't think it'll be necessarily that I remember a certain topic. I think I'll actually remember them all pretty well now that I've, <laughs> I've taught them all multiple times. Um, yeah. Lactose is definitely a topic a set of lectures that everyone remembers and I think is very special. But for me, I think what I will probably remember is sort of the Humbio culture. So the idea that students are really encouraged to work together to do their assignments and problem sets mm -hmm. together to form study groups. It's a very collaborative environment and that's something we really try to foster and I think that is that is present in many departments at Stanford, but not all. And I think it, it can be a little bit unique and, and pretty special, at least in my experience it's been more rare than I'd like it to be. Mm -hmm. And I think I'll remember that, you know, doing problem sets late at night with a group of people where everyone's just helping each other or when I didn't understand a concept and, and someone helped to explain it to me right away. You know, there was no holding back. Everyone just wanted to help each other. And I think that's something that the human biology department does a really excellent job of mm -hmm. is saying that this is a collaborative collegiate environment. Um, we're going to provide a class where everyone can, you know, work really hard and and work together and and do well. And I think that's really special. Yeah, yeah, I would definitely agree with that. It's probably those long hours <laughs> studying. You know, it's it's the challenge of the core. It's a very sort of rigorous curriculum. You have to work very hard at it. And I think that really brings the class together. You know, you have about 200, 230, 240 classmates, and you know, it's so helpful to find a group of people with whom you can trust each other and work productively and study. And yeah, I think a lot of those moments sophomore year, those Wednesday nights working on problem sets and mm -hmm. those long sort of Saturdays and Sundays studying for the exams coming up on you know, mm -hmm. the next Monday and things like that. Yeah, it, I guess it's mostly about the, the people more than the, the topics themselves. Mm -hmm.